Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and we are coloring all the things with me as we always do because coloring is my jam. And I am here for both World Watercolor Month, that is every July, as well as the summer of stamping. Ellen's got a great celebration ahead for the next couple of weeks. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around and this is the card I'm gonna to watercolor today. This is the first set in the summer of stamping and it's a pairing with Avery L. They made these stamps just for Ellen Hudson. It's the only place you can get them. There are dies. Yours will come with more professional packaging. I got the prototype set when I got mine so that I could color this up for you. And I'm gonna be doing some watercolor and showing you how to mix watercolors with each other to start building a rainbow. But first we've got to get some other parts done. I wanted to have a white unicorn and that meant I needed to have very light gray in it. So I mixed a very watery gray, but before I put any color down, I put water in the area first. You can see how the color is traveling. So I could just drop that color in and then let it go. And I heat set it right away because I didn't want it to keep moving and I didn't want to end up touching it with anything else. Then I made a puddle of the same color. It's neutral tint, any kind of black will do to make a black bear. And on the left side of my puddle, I have watered down paint. On the right hand side, I have thicker paint. Sometimes I do that when I want to have the two options ready when I'm going to do a painting sections. So here I'm using the thinner color to paint the bear first and get all of the ears and the head and all that kind of stuff in there. And then when I go to quickly grab some color because everything's drying really fast. It's hot in my studio, hot as anything, and everything dries quickly. I can at least go grab from this puddle that I've already got with some thicker paint in it. I noticed already within seconds that my paint was already drying because nothing was moving. So I had to put the color down and then go rinse my brush and get it just damp. So I wiped the brush off on a paper towel and then was able to blend it. But having two parts in the puddle with either two different colors or a thicker and thinner version of it helps in your color mixing and getting it done quickly while you're trying to keep the paint wet. So I have started with yellow, my new gamboge color, threw in some anthraquinoid scarlet to make an orange. And I'm just gonna work in the same puddles for quite a bit of this in order to just keep adapting the color. So I've added some red and any red will do. I added some red to my yellow and it made an orange and I'm just going to paint all the sections that I want to have in that rainbow color starting with those and then in order to get more of a red color I mixed in a couple different reds to try to get it a little thicker and a little bit more intense red red than the orange. Now be careful when you're doing this if you need to heat set in between, do so. But since my paint was already drying really quickly on that black, I felt pretty confident to just keep plowing ahead with my painting and keep going and not worry about it bleeding together. When I did the stamping for this, by the way, I stamped the, the ball first and masked off the bottom of it, just wiped off some ink. I stamped the paw and then masked that off and I stamped the bear and then I masked that off and then I stamped the unicorn. So it was a series of stuff that I had to do in order to make this little scene come together. And then you can always use a pen to draw in any parts that didn't get stamped and line up quite perfectly with each other. So in order to get the next color, I switched to a new puddle. You might've noticed, instead of working with that same yellow and yellow orange and red puddle, puddle, I started with some quinacridone rose and started adding purple to it. And then I'll add blue to this to just keep getting a succession of purples. I didn't start with the puddle that I had used earlier because that has yellow in it, remember? That's what we started with. When I add blue to that, that would make brown. And you don't want to add yellow, blue, and red together, the three primaries, because they'll make brown. So I had to go to a second puddle for the other half of the rainbow. So it's real easy to make a rainbow of colors and just keep using the same puddles, but you'll probably need two of them. One that's going to be a warm puddle for all your reds, oranges, and yellows, and one that's a cool puddle for your blues and your purples and red violets and things. So I just added all those different colors onto all these parts of the 
unicorn floaty and the ball and the little outfit. It was just so much fun to paint this. And then added some burnt sienna and kind of muddied up the burnt sienna with a few things that were already in the palette to make the snout of my bear. Now, for the water, there's a whole different kind of thing that we need to be considering, which is how to make the foam. And what I've done, you you can see, is already left the top edges of the foam. Remember where I, I said I wiped off the stamp so that I wouldn't have any ink on that bottom part because I want it to float in the foam. Well, if I paint negatively on the top and the bottom of it with scrubby edges, using I'm using the side of my brush, and this is rough watercolor paper, so it's very bumpy, it gives me that edge that looks like, like roiling foam. I'm not sure how active this bear really is <laughs> running around creating foam while floating in a floaty, but I'm making it a little more exciting and active for him, so I think that still works. The color that I'm using right now for the water is fluorescent electric blue. It's not fluorescent and it's not electric, but it has a little shimmer to it when you use it thick. So if you're looking for something with shimmer, that's a nice color, but I also like it for a sky or for a base for water like I'm using here. And you can see I'm just kind of painting a bunch of this color down below. I'm adding some cobalt blue into that fluorescent electric blue, just so I can have a little different color in my water. And that gives not necessarily a shadow, but a little darkness so that the white starts to appear more white. When you want something to look like it's white, it has to have some color around it. And this is also making the unicorn look white and yet it's got some dimension to it because we painted that gray into it. So that is my sweet little card for today. You can see the link in the doobly-doo for Soak It Up if you need to grab that stamp set. It's really cute and it's gonna make you cooler this summer, I promise. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.